For the past decade or so, everyone has been concerned with the bees. What's happening to them? Where are they going? What's the cause of colony collapse disorder? And day by day, we get our answer. What's wrong with the bees? Everything. Seriously, everything is wrong with the bees. There are so many different factors that influence bee populations that we can't just point to one issue. But one of the most popular problems to discuss is that of pesticides. Various pesticides tend to drive away or kill bees, and it's very complicated to figure out exactly what's happening and how we can stop it. A new study, though, is making headlines this week that claims to show that it's not just pesticides that are the trouble, but also herbicides. And the bad guy is Monsanto. Monsanto, the bane of my skeptical existence, because they're so often the target of pseudoscience and fear-mongering, while at the same time they're an asshole corporation that does asshole things, and I have to defend them. It's like if Trump ever said anything that wasn't an outright lie, and it was my job to defend him on it. It's gross, but whatever. That's my cross to bear. Monsanto makes an herbicide known as glyphosate. Since it's not a pesticide, it's not meant to cause any harm to bees and insects. However, some researchers suspected that it might cause bees harm in another way, by affecting their gut bacteria. The researchers found that bees exposed to glyphosate were more likely to lack an enzyme in their guts that's targeted by that herbicide, which then in turn makes them more susceptible to diseases they might encounter later. So yeah, not good. Uh, Is it time to panic about glyphosate as people have been attempting to do for many years now, mostly because it's produced by Monsanto and that's scary. And so people assume that it must cause cancer, even though scientists can't find any evidence to support that claim. But forget about all that cancer. Now it's all about bees. Uh, So no, obviously, it's not time to panic. Here's what you need to know. The study involved megadosing these bees directly with glyphosate over the course of several days without really establishing how much they're likely to encounter in the wild. And strangely, bees who got five milligrams of glyphosate per day had worse outcomes than bees who got twice as much, 10 milligrams of it. The researchers aren't sure why. Maybe more of those bees died before they could be recaptured, or maybe the results for the five milligrams are just a statistical blip. More research needs to be done. Also, honeybees just aren't in trouble. This study only looked at honeybees, which are an invasive species here in the United States that is actually quite well protected, in part because they exist in large colonies that can protect individuals, and also because they're protected by the humans who keep them. Native bees, however, aren't so lucky. A lot of those bee species are lone wolves who don't have a hive to help protect them, and they're the ones that are doing the vast majority of the pollinating. Maybe glyphosate will affect them in the same way it affects honeybees, but we don't know that. Again, we need more information. As of right now, it seems like the worst thing happening to bees is what's right in front of our faces, the loss of their native habitat, which we destroy in order to have the prettiest lawns and the most convenient highway systems. So when you see The Guardian breathlessly reporting that Monsanto is once again destroying the world, take it with a grain of delicious, genetically modified Franken-salt.